Okay, welcome. Welcome to Kirsty Robinson, who is part of the Women in Rugby League and Life with the Lionesses. Welcome to this interview and thank you so much for being interviewed. Um, could we start with when, uh, you know, when you were born and how did you get into playing rugby league uh, and how old you were and all those sort of things? What got you into rugby league? So the main driving force of me playing rugby league was my dad. Um, obviously, it was classed as professional, but really it was semi-professional in, in those days. So from me being three or four, going to watch him play at Keithley and Carlisle, um, being in the clubhouse at a half time, we know nobody there and me and the other kids just running around with a rugby ball um, and then obviously spending time with my dad constantly. So I, I started probably at the age of four liking rugby. Uh, my first team I played at Kippox in the under sevens. Um, which so from was, a young again, age, yeah. Yes, yeah. So again, my dad was the driving force. I played at Kippox till the age of 11 when girls was not allowed to play with boys in any sport at, at all. Um, so my rugby career was forged by my dad and he kept pushing me with it in terms of he was coaching, I'd go training with him, regardless of if I wasn't playing games, I'd, I'd be training three, four times a week with him whilst he was coaching with the open age teams. Um, I then fell into football, uh, women's football, because uh, the local team, but my, my passion was rugby league. Um, and then it was a, an ex-Red Hill player, Liz Egg, um, who approached my dad and said, can we take her down to Red Hill? Um, and that's when I started my women's career at the age of 16. I was going to say, how old were you? I know you were a young player, weren't you, when you played open age? Yes, yeah, yeah. So I, th I think I started training when I was 15, 16 mm. um, in 96. So I was still doing GCSEs. Mm, yeah, yeah. And what was it like when you first started playing women's rugby league? Um, obviously, there's a persona around women's rugby league or any women's sport. Um, in, in terms of obviously sexuality is a big thing so as a youngster it was like oh am I gonna are my school friends gonna think that are my school friends gonna think that but it was just the love of the game that I had and it was the first time I put my boots and I put a shirt on and played a proper game with the other players around me at the time was it was an honour um, and then to see my dad and my mum at the sideline watching something that he brought me into, but then he was bringing his his players down that he coached at Kippers, mm. and they fell in love with the game. It was it was phenomenal how they come watch every week, not just because I was playing, yeah, but because yeah. of the standard. Absolutely, yeah, because Red Hill were one of the uh, main teams, wasn't they, at the time? Yeah, Red Hill and. And Wakefield, the big rivalry at the time. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so tell us what a bit about you. Um, you're a, you're a playing for Great Britain because obviously you're one of the lionesses. Uh, mm. Um, from from those early days. Tell us a bit about how you became a lioness and what it was like and the pathway you took to it. Um. So obviously, '96 I played for Red Hill, and that was the first tour, and I'd only just come in to the, the game. Um, in 97, I moved to Wakefield, where obviously Jackie Sheldon, who was the coach at the time of the Lionesses, and Brenda Dobek, one of the captains of the Lionesses, um, asked me to go play for them. Mm. Uh, so I, I joined Wakefield, and obviously then Jackie, um, she, she invited me to go training with the Great Britain squad, which at that point, it was like, yes I'm, I'm making it yeah. um and obviously for me it was it was quite easy transition for me because I got quite funding because I was still studying so Jackie was able to get me grants um so that side of it was was really helpful but to actually be chosen to just even train with them in, at mm. that early stage was it was an honor um and I was beaming with pride and my family beat being with pride and it was just 
in a way it was a gloatful thing for me with my dad because it was like I've made it you didn't um but yeah it was it, at that stage of being called up to train with them that was an honor in itself um obviously you had the, the stress of going through all the training not knowing if you was going to get picked for the tour um and for myself uh, in 98 it was I was a young player um so to be blunt I was a bit cocksure at the time um thinking I, I were a world beater and I could beat, <laughs> beat anybody and I was the best of any anybody but you got brought down a peg or two um especially when on tour yeah yeah so what was the training like then before you went on tour to New Zealand so the, the the training was quite intense because we had our own training programs. So you was training club level through the week. You was playing on a Sunday, but then you'd have Great Britain training on a Saturday, as well as doing your own program. Um, the program in '98 wasn't as hard and rigorous as what it was in the 2000 tour, because we had a lot more people involved so Simon came involved as a strength and conditioning coach mm. um so the over the years you could see the training intense mm. and become more of a professional training um but when you want because I was one to always want to please it was I was going to college I was coming home going out on runs I was going to the gym I was doing my club training then I was training on a Saturday with Great Britain playing on a on a Sunday so being such a young player it was like my youth was taken away from me a little bit i.e when you turn 18 you, you, you should be going out and having a laugh with your friends I was that dedicated I didn't want to do that yeah it meant that much to you actually playing for Great Britain and being part of that team and those greats as well yeah exactly yeah. playing alongside yeah. Brenda Dobit playing alongside Lisa McIntosh um, Karen Burris, Joanna Will, Sue Awards, they, they were all great players and, yeah. and there were a lot, they, they were key mentors, especially yeah. for somebody my age. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. What about off the pitch then around what you had to do in order to make sure that you went on tour around fundraising? and? Yeah, so that, some players have the network in terms of where I lived, it was very commu community driven. Um, so I we'd organise uh, fundraising dues in the local club rugby club. Um, and where 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 I'm situated, we had play ex players like Daryl Powell, uh, Matty Crowther, uh, some of the Lee Crooks that was able to donate things for us to auction off. Um, and we would just have raffles and. We'd get quite. A, I'd got quite a lot of support. Then your family. You're relying on your nan, your granddad, <laughs> to sponsor you to go on tour to represent your country. Um, so I, it was difficult, but because of where I was, it it was nice that my community supported me doing that. Yeah, and, you, and my yeah. family. Because it just wasn't one tour, was it? So you were on three tours, so each time you had to raise the funds to be able to be involved. Yeah, three tours, and I think it felt like, especially the last tour where it was like, she's knocking on the door again. She's wanting... And, and I think some people initially felt like, oh, I'm going to New Zealand to play rugby for Great Britain. Initially, it was like, well, is it just an holiday or are you actually going to play rugby? What's the setup? And... People questioned it because we was raising, I think, we had to raise a £1,000 for New Zealand. There was, we had to raise 2000 for Australia and it was a £1,000 for uh, the UK to the World Cup. Yeah. But e even that, we had to embarrass ourselves by going on Moment of Truth. Oh, where... tell us about that. <laughs> <laughs> So we was at training and Jackie at the end of the training session said, can I have five volunteers to do a programme to raise money? So there was me, uh, Shelley Land, Lisa, Becky Stevens, 
uh, and Jane Banks. So we all put our names down and the moment of truth, if you've ever seen it, is Scylla Black, um, where she puts challenges in place, mainly for families, but one of them were a team effort. And we had to do something called the Diablo, where it's a big cotton uh, ball on a piece of string, put it over a foot and pass it between each other. Um, so we volunteered and we had a camera on us for a week, following us, training, doing doing our practices for the show. We went down to London, filmed it, and we raised £5,000 for all the team to have suits. So yeah, we looked yeah. smart at the end of it, <laughs> at the end of the game, but very embarrassing. And looking back, it was it was fun to do and it, it brought us together as a team. And when it came out, we was actually in the World Cup. So when it came onto TV, I think it was like on the 4th of November. So we always sat in the hotel waiting for it to come on. So we got absolutely ribbed from our expressions from the video that we had to make uh, everybody was just all the team was having a laugh and a joke and really ribbing us from our reactions on the tv and am I right in thinking you didn't actually do it until the actually it was actually alive and you managed to do it yeah so all the way through we'd never completed it and um literally on the day we was outside on the Thames in the ITV studio ground and we was practicing and practicing and practicing and we could never do it. We was like so close. Even in rehearsals, we failed to do it. And we were all that nervous. We went on the couch, Silla Black talked to us for a bit and uh, then she says, right, go do it. And we did it and it was like we had just won the World Cup. And we was running around the stairs, jumping up and everything. <laughs> Silla was trying to calm us down just to, like, get us off the stage. And then when we came round, we was all lined up and she was congratulating and saying, congratulate the Great Britain women's team. Off you go. Me and Jane was at either side of Silla and we, like, dragged her along with us so they had to refilm it. <laughs> Fantastic. <laughs> so oh, what lovely memories. So excited. And as we run off, after we did run off, Jackie was in the wings and we just all jumped on her. And we, it was like, as I say, it was like we'd won the World Cup itself. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic. What lovely memories. That's great. Can you remember that first tour and what it was like? Because I know it was quite a long tour, wasn't it, to New Zealand? Yeah, I think we was over there for three and a half, four weeks. So we had three regional games, three test matches. Um, but instead of where we was in Australia just for two and a half, three weeks, it was like three three days between the games. Um, so at first, when we landed, it was very exhausting. Um, and I always remember landing and Jackie saying, as soon as we get to the hotel, get your training kit on, we're going out training. And I was, we was all like, we've only just landed. We've just done 24 hours on a plane and you want us to go out training. Um, and I remember training for the first time and we got back to the hotel. It's like, right, we're going down for lunch, uh, dinner at six o'clock. We were all fast asleep in our food. Our heads just went. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, I remember even from getting the coach at Ferrybridge service station, everybody's family's there and, and, and wishing us good luck and the media that it was just at the time there was sky wasn't interested we had a bit of local attention from itv uh, local news um but it was just more papers that were there um and i remember the emotions running high uh, for myself being my first tour my first time away from my family um it was quite nice the girls got around me i was crying on the bus as it set off, uh, but the team got behind me and supported me all the way to Heathrow. Mm. Um, but mentally, that was quite tough, being a first tour away from home, not really knowing the team 
the players, the individuals, because it was my first tour with them and some of them I'd not even really communicated with mm. on, a, on a playing once, twice a year. Mm. Um, so mentally it was quite tough. Um, and I was doing my year levels at the time, uh, waiting for my year level results. So there, there was all that going off in my head. Um, you have your ups and downs with people when you're on tour as well. It, people think you're on tour, you're with your mates, you're having a laugh. There, there's, <laughs> there's ups and downs and the, the, it's, it's like anything. You can't get on 24-7. Mm. Um, so mentally, there was ups and downs, um, especially being away from home for me. That was a key one. Yeah, missing your family and friends. And... Yeah, but it was good that we had a support ne- mechanism. So you had Paula, the physio. Um, she was always there as a mother figure as such. I always remember one time she put me in the physio room. I had a bit of a meltdown on tour and she put me in the physio room and said, right, you're sleeping on the physio bed tonight. <laughs> um, <laughs> but she stayed with me. So yeah, yeah, there, yeah. Was, there was times where, yes, there was tears, there was downs, there was... But that doesn't say anything for all the ups that we had. Yeah. The laughs, the the fun times, the camaraderie, kangaroo courts, where we just put anybody in court for something really stupid. It it it, it was tough, but we got through it. Yeah, yeah. Is there any special memories you've got from that time that spring to mind? I think from New Zealand, the special, the the biggest one that sticks out is putting the shirt on for the first time. Mm. Um, so I was quite lucky on that tour where I was selected to play all six games that were out there um, and putting the shirt on and listen, listening to the national anthem was one of the greatest moments anybody can wish for especially in sports mm. um, I think from my other tours I think um the biggest memory that sticks with me is the kangaroo court where there was me, Lisa Mack, Becky Stevens, and I believe it was Jane Banks. We got put up in kangaroo court for something stupid and we pretended that we was the exorcist. Um, and it, <laughs> oh, it was Andy McDonald that put us up. And we just did this, we rehearsed it for a good two hours on an evening, just so we could just make everybody laugh. Um, yeah, it was, it was, those days were fun. Yeah, yeah. So some special friends and special memories. Yes, definitely. Yeah, definitely. so what, so, so you were in, uh, as I say, you were in sort of the 1998, the 2000, 2002 to what, what, what? What about the 2002 tour? How did that go and what, what are your memories from that? So 2002, um, the memories from that was, obviously, I, I played, I had a lot more, the, the, the team was a lot more together. Um, it was, well, I remember being in Melbourne, Nikki Carter was the manager and me and Chantel Patrick she had we was in no it was in Canberra and she had a car so me and Chantal Patrick decided that we'd drive the car around the campus and make it look like it was pinched (laughs) (laughs) um but in 2002 I was seeing more of a senior player because I've I'd done two tours before Mm. even though I, I was still quite young um so we had a lot of youngsters uh, we had a young six, 16, 17 year old. So it was a bit like going back and, and mentoring her from your own experiences mm. um, and, in, and and being more there for them. Mm. Um, but yeah, the, the Australian tour was really good. We had a lot more coming together as a team um, where sometimes you get dropped on tour Sometimes you'd be upset and you'd be thinking, why have I been dropped? It was more that we're there as a team. It, it, as long as you're on side doing your bit, if you're not playing, you've still got 
you you place to play as such part to play in the, in the game yeah so what's the positive aspect of playing for great britain then playing international um for me it was sense of achievement uh sense of pride uh, making my family feel feel proud of me letting my family see that i i can achieve and just putting the shirt on just mm. my childhood dream was to initially i wanted to be a 400 meter hurdle runner after sally gunnell that was never going to happen not with these <laughs> legs <laughs> um, so um i've always wanted to sport that i love and play for and, and represent my country and I think that's one of the greatest things that's come out of it for me. Yeah. What was the most challenging, do you think? Um, mentally, because there's ups and downs and you, you go in and play, want to play one position, but then you put in another position. And, and, and the, ch the challenge of training, uh, I think I felt it more in 2000 and 2002, um, just because I was in full-time work. Um, so dragging yourself from work to then go do a two hour training session, then the next day you've got a two hour training session plus your club training session. Um, so yeah, I think there was a lot more mentally in, in those tours for me because of work commitments and trying to get to the level that I'd been challenged to get to. Mm. Um, and, and make sure that I stayed injury free as well mm. especially I think for I think everybody will probably say this the 2000 it was in our own country yeah. we we had his own fans we had his own family and friends wanting to come not just to the local games they, they were travelling from Yorkshire to Lancashire and, and vice versa to get to the games even when it was supposed to be in one location they changed the day around to get to, I think we were supposed to play at Hull in the first game of the um, World Series against New Zealand. And it got changed to um, Lancashire because of the weather. So even to have that, knowing that your family and friends are there and willing to come and support you, whatever it may be, um, and having them watching you. So, yeah, that was a proud moment. Yeah, and there's only uh, there was only ever one that you played in. Well, in that this particular from '96 to 2003, that actually was at home, so that people yeah. got to see you, wasn't it? So uh, very yeah. special. It was, it was, and I think that yeah. that's that, that's I think that's why my medal's still pride of place in the lounge. <laughs> <laughs> and do you reflect on your achievements in rugby league then? Yeah, all, all the time. It's um, I, so. Me and my partner can go out and obviously where I live, it's uh, Rugby Union. Um, so I did play a little bit of Rugby Union when I came down here, uh, played at Saracens. Um, I did uh, two seasons with Saracens. Um, and then I, I actually did a bit of coaching for the Thames Valley under 17s. Um, so that was a Maggie Afonzi uh, era at Saracens. I played alongside her. Wow. Um, so a lot of people around where we go and with the, the social life know rugby union. So when I talk to them about me playing rugby league, it's like, wow, we're, we're, we're in greatness. And it was like, well, no, not really. It's for, for me it is, but yeah, the, in, in terms of where I, where I am, I talk about it all the time. And I, even there's some old boys that go into our local pub who's rugby union wanted to see my World Cup medal. So I had to take it out with me. <laughs> and, <laughs> there you go. Um, and, and there's certain things that just make you you click um, in terms of you'll be watching a game and you'll think, I remember that. I remember when I did that or I did a tackle like that. Or And, and then you, I start talking to my partner about it or when we were on tour or, when I played this game, it's like you just have little memories, and obviously certain people you've kept, I've kept in contact with. So like Lisa, uh, Jane Banks. Mm. Um, after we finished, well, after I finished touring and playing rugby league because I had a relocation, um, I'd go on holiday with them. So we st we still have a, a good bond, um, mm. 
and, and we still can reminisce of, oh, do you remember when we were this? And uh, I think when we did the last luncheon, um, I think there was a comment about when I lost loads of weight um, by Becky Stevens. And again, I reflect on that and think, I blame that on rugby league. <laughs> <laughs> I blame that on that tour because I got told I was too big to actually play that position. Um, and, and there's just certain things that you reminisce as soon as you, you see it, anybody that you used to play with. Yeah, it's so important, isn't it, that connection and that community that, you know that sport gives you but in this particular case rugby league and playing yeah. international rugby league yeah and yeah. the friendships you make are, are, are yeah second to none so what would you say to um uh, women and girls that are playing now in the future generation about rugby league and what you've learned and um any, think, any messages yeah definitely don't be scared to get involved um, and, and especially parents to young girls, it, it's not as rough and tough as you think it is. It's a great community for your young child to get involved in, young girls to build confidence, uh, build great friendships um, and, and forge a really good career from it now, especially with the focus of how it's going. But the key thing is enjoyment, mm. friendships, and team building and don't be scared to let your child do that oh brilliant Kirsty, thank you for your time it's been an absolute pleasure you sharing your memories um, no thank you for inviting uh, me. and you'll have inspired so many people from what you said and thank you very much no thank you very much for inviting me julia much appreciated <laughs>